So the first load of wood to be dried in the solar kiln has been in there for 21 days. Yes, that's three weeks. I wanna take a quick check and see where the moisture content of the wood is at. And then I wanna give you the three devices that I'm using to monitor and help regulate and make this kiln work. Let's go check it out. Now, if you remember, the first thing is, I call this the Solar Kiln Plus. And plus is because I made it as a hot box dehumidification kiln. I will link to the first video that shows me building it, using it inside the workshop. And when I was inside the workshop, I had a couple oil heaters and a dehumidifier in there. That was pulling the moisture out as the wood released the moisture. The Solar Kiln, now I will put a link somewhere, probably down in the description. This is roughly based off of the West Virginia, Virginia Tech uh, solar kiln plans. It's a little bit smaller. I started with a base that was already built for another project. So I do also call this my mini bake wood oven. And I had, was in the shop for a while when we started the timber frame, I had to move it out of the shop to get there. It sat up front and then it came over here. So now when I moved it from the front of the workshop over to here, where it is right there, this was the only space I had available in uh, the log yard. This is not the ideal space, but I will cover that in a bit. First thing I'm gonna do is open it up and yes, you are correct. I need to finish making the doors, but that's kind of the MO around here. We get things a certain, certain distance and then we got to work on something else but we'll come back to it but i'm going to pull this off and check it out and see where it's at so the first uh instrument that i use to just kind of monitor and this is more check the moisture is a wagner uh meter 510 or 910 comes on a nice little box wagner meters probably of the pinless maybe one of the better i don't know Leave a comment what you think is the best. I think I will be adding the Delmhurst with the pin so I can get down into it. The thing you have to remember about this, this is measuring three quarters of an inch down. So it can do, you know, six uh, quarters, so inch and a half wood, and it's gonna measure right in the middle. So anything smaller when I'm measuring uh, like this four quarter right here, yeah, it's measuring past down into it. When I test some of these pieces that are 10, 10 quarter, 10 quarter, two and a half inch, I'm not getting to the center of the wood and I need to remember that when I'm taking readings and where I want to be. The other thing that you have to do when you turn it on, um, it, the species of wood makes a difference. And so they send this nice little booklet around. What is in here? There is birch, it happens to be paper birch. Uh, so when you come in here, it tells me the species code is 0.55. And then there's some green ash up on the top. And yes, there's different ashes, but green ash is 0.56. And it's very simple. You just go in and just adjust down to the 5.5. Now I did a couple of readings. When I put this in, I was getting readings in and around uh, anywhere from 13 to 16, a couple of 12s when I put the wood in. So I had air dried this. I cut this last fall. Uh, it sat outside <coughs> during the winter when it was covered with snow and ice. It wasn't really losing very much moisture. But and since I cut it, it probably came down somewhere between 12 and 16%. The readings that I did we are down anywhere between nine and 11%. So it, in the three weeks, it's dropped considerably, getting close to the range. Now, one thing that's really nice about this meter is the, the hold part. So as you put it on wood and slide it, it will take the reading that's there. But if you have to reach in and you can't read it, you just tap the hold button once and then you get your reading. So going in, so like this section, and that's a, a six quarter board. That one there is reading at 7% uh, moisture. So that one's close, but I go down into another one here that I can get into. 
and that one's reading at 9.6. Now this is the whole part of learning the kiln. I think just like when you're grilling, you learn your grill, where the hot spot is, where the cool spot is, when you want to cook something. Same thing, I think after maybe 10 loads, I'll have it really dialed in, but that's where all of these instruments really make a difference because you have to kind of keep track of where things are, where they're going. Uh, one more read, let's do one more read on the birch. And that one, that's one of those little thicker, and that one's coming in at 10. So there's a little variance in the overall, you know, which boards I'm measuring, where they are in the kiln. I really wish I could get into one of these big hunks, but I'm not gonna be able to. Yeah. Okay, let's do a quick read on the ash. So I'm gonna change the species. That goes up to the 5.6. So that one up there, that's a six quarter. That's coming in at nine six. And that one right in the middle is coming in at seven five. And another one that's in at seven eight. So it's moving along nicely in three weeks. I'm gonna say we've lost anywhere between four or five percent moisture content in the wood. Another two weeks is gonna be my guess, and we are gonna be right where we want to be somewhere between six and eight percent on all of the wood that's in here okay the next little device that i want to show you that i'm using is just a really simple uh ink bird and this one is two and you like that yes you know once i finish putting siding on i'm going to build a nice little box here and have another little eh in there for all the probes but you know what for now a piece of poly keeps it dry um what I have going on here and how these things work is there is a probe that I just stuff through the insulation. That probe is just gonna read temperatures. Uh, and then on here, we set a target temperature and you can see that the heating is on right now. I don't have anything plugged into the heating when I was using the oil burner, yes. That's what would trigger the oil burner to go on. I'm using the cooling and I have it set at uh, 85. I started out at 72 degrees and it has a three degree window. So that meant once it hit 75 degrees, it kicked the three fans on in there. In this case, I moved it up about a week ago to 82 degrees. So now when it hits 85 degrees, it kicks on. And I think that actually helped and made a little bit of a difference. I'll show you in a minute. But this is a very simple, these are, all these things just come online and you find them. But the Inkbird monitor is great, um, kicks the fan on, and away we go. So I'm just going to stuff him back in when I close it back up. This probe will go on, and when it hits a temperature, that's when it's going to um, kick on. So for those of you that didn't see the first video, that's where you can see up in that corner is where the power comes through, plugged in. And I have three attic fans in here, and that is what moves the air. So once we get up the temperature, and it's pretty crazy, the sun is now out, but you can already feel it warming up in there. And those are the three fans that move that warmed air all the way around. So the third instrument that I use to monitor the wood uh, is by sensor push. And all three of these are needed no matter what to, to just know where your wood's at, turn the fan on, and keep track of anything. But these things are cool. So all that they are, and I've got a couple of them out here, it is just this little guy right here. That's one right there. This is the one that's been in the kiln. So I think next time I've been kind of monitoring outside, I've been monitoring inside, and he's just been setting here. So this is taking, I think it's like every minute, it will take a reading of the relative humidity that's in there and the temperature. So. This is where there's, I wanna say there's a lot to learn because like, should I be reading the temperature here? Should I be reading it down here? Should I be reading it up front? Should I read it up front, up high, up front? But it's all gonna be in here. But as long as you're consistent with some of the readings and trying to track where it's going and what it's doing, I think that's what you need. So the sensors are super cool. The best part is they have a free app that just you load on your phone and right in there the sensor push you just push right in 
and then it keeps track of everything. So the one that I call Solar Kiln 1, that's this guy in here. This number two was Workshop, and that's out the one that's been sitting outside. And what's awesome is their Bluetooth. So they also have a gateway, so you can read it. When I was monitoring the kiln inside the shop, I really wanted to know what was going because I was on my way to Montana. And if it was getting above 200 degrees and then it was starting on fire, then I needed to let somebody know. It didn't. That's good. Um, so I'm not as worried about monitoring this around the clock. So every day when I get to work, I just bop out here and then the Bluetooth connects and we get it. So... Here's where we are right here. So earlier this morning, we already started to go up a little bit. And since I've opened it up, we dropped down in temperature and it's, it's that's how sensitive it is. And even with it open, it has started to go up a little bit. So then this is, this is what's so cool about this whole thing. Cause then you can go to day and you can see where it's reading and going in and you can tell the, it's the, the, it's so precise that if a cloud goes by and it drops a percentage, you can tell when that cloud went by. Or when you look at a week, like right here, can you tell on Monday and Sunday when it rained and we didn't have any sun? This is a solar kiln. And I, I know that, but there is, I think sometimes when you confuse uh, like a solar panel for generating electricity, it takes some of the ambient light and it still creates. This is, if that ray of sun is not like hitting the collector on the front, it's not warming up that much. It will a little bit with the ambient temperature and not much because there's so much insula insulation on this guy, but that sun is just what's hitting it. Anyways, we can go back and look at a month. So here's my month. And I don't know how we'll show this, but besides, it's pretty cool. But I can watch the highest that it's been, and there's 135 degrees. And we had one night where it got down to 62 degrees. The average temperature has been holding it in there at 92 degrees, even though we've had cooler nights. And just the, the relative humidity of how it's moving in there. When I first loaded, it was 65%. But the lowest that we've had is 19.6 and you can see right in here this is kind of interesting this is when i changed the setting from uh, 72 degrees kicking the fan on to 82 degrees and the humidity inside didn't go as high i think leave a comment if you know and there's a lot of good forums out there too besides that just the when it cools down a little bit and it starts pushing that air and drawing in new air from the outside, but it turning off at 85 degrees, letting the wood just sit there for a little bit at night and not have the fan moving, that's like made a little difference in the relative humidity reading. Anyways, this is such a cool tool because I don't have to open it up. I can just see where we're going in that... Um, like I said earlier, in that three weeks that this has been going, it's dropped about five percent moisture in the wood and the highest reading i had a 10-1 and i had several nine nines and a lot of sixes and sevens so we we have a really nice stretch of weather coming up as far as summer so we're going to have 80s and 90s for the next week or so no rain in the forecast so i think in like two weeks more this uh this load will be where I want it and we'll take it out. Sanitizing 140 and 150 degrees, bringing it up there. That's gonna be another beast. And this one, under these circumstances, I can't do it. I did it when we were inside with the oil burners. I got it up to 140 for three days and sanitized the wood. Uh, that's the world we live in. You'll have to follow along because I actually will be building a large sanitizing box. So as part of this whole crazy log yard thing that I'm doing and sawmilling, that's uh, on the horizon is building a pretty cool sanitizing box. So you'll want to watch that. Okay, the last little thing I'm going to talk about is the location of this kiln. Let's check that out. So as I mentioned, when I moved the kiln out here, it was um, the only space that was available. And as I had just mentioned, it's those rays of sun that directly hit it. Now here is the sawmill itself. So maybe I'll jump up on this log here so you get a better. There's the sawmill itself. 
This whole area is the log yard and what I'm working on right now, there's a lot of things, there's so much. Maybe I'll do a, a tour. If you want me to do a tour of my craziness in my log yard and sawmill, just leave a thumbs up somewhere and we'll do that. Anyway, so this pile of wood, we're getting through some of this. This is getting moved. I'm going to move the kiln up to here. I originally had it planned for over there, but we might get there. But what I've noticed is in the location is this big old hackberry right here. That blocks the sun going onto that for about an hour and 20 minutes in the morning. And believe it or not, I'm gonna turn this other way. Uh, this pine and actually another hackberry. How about that? That hackberry right there about four o'clock it starts shading and This spot right here just 30 feet forward It will get approximately two hours more of sunlight And the probably the bigger part is that afternoon Sun is definitely hotter because I can see right when I'm looking on The sensor push app you can see four o'clock four o'clock four o'clock it's going up 130 and the second a leaf starts blocking that that's where it starts to take that turn so I'm pretty excited with the next load pushing it up into this area picking up that extra hour and 20 plus minutes in the morning but more importantly over here that four o'clock to five o'clock when the sun is smoking hot that's gonna get in there and I'm gonna get like two hours more of cooking wood in the solar kiln Anyways, it's been a fabulous journey getting this far. Yeah, we're gonna get the doors built. We're gonna get it sided. We're gonna get the box on the other thing, but it's fun to just check it out, give you an update where we're at on this guy. And thanks for following along. I appreciate it. Thanks for checking out all of the milling videos. We got some fun ones coming up with a couple new chainsaw mills and just projects out here. Um, do me a big favor trying to get to 10,000 followers by the end of the year here on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that uh, subscribe button, hit the like button, and I really would appreciate any and all of the help, and thanks for following along. That's it, Glenn here, <laughs> Workshop at the Gardens. Cheers. Yeah, it is super, super cool. So within less than an hour of sealing up the back and putting the red tape on and, and my sensors on the back, so the front was probably higher, but in under an hour, it went up uh, over 10 degrees. It went from 77 and we're now over, well, it was, yeah, 75 when, 76 when we started. There we go, 75 when we started. It is now at 86.7 and we just kicked the fan on. We didn't. The, the ink bird just kicked the fan on and we're cooking away. So really, really cool stuff here. Thanks for following. Cheers.